<laughs> Hello, welcome to a brand new episode of the Nerd Apocalypse Podcast. I'm your host Jay. I'm here with my co-host Micah. Hey. And Terrence. What's up? All right, guys, we are back. We have plenty to talk about. Um, not a lot checked out, but I want to have a really interesting conversation with Terrence. You just saw <laughs> Starship Troopers for the very first time. I yeah, exactly. Yeah. Micah's response is exactly the same. <laughs> Like I've never um, seen it. I never, never saw it in a movie theater. Um, I've always seen like bits and pieces, so I knew what it was about, but I never watched the entire movie before. Um, when it came out, ninety seven. Yes, uh, I would have been sixteen. Yeah, I didn't go to the theater. Uh, it's just pretty good. It it the it's supposed to. It's Paul Verhoeven, so it's like satire. Um, what I heard is it's supposed to satirize like fascism. Yes, and to yeah. Okay, I, I got that, but at the same time, I'm like Rico, his parents. Like, like the movie's great. I actually really enjoyed the movie. It the the, the visual effects, the third, the almost thirty year old visual effects still hold up. There's something about practical effects that I really like. Yeah, and they, yeah, they look practical, the practical mix with CG, like even and even the CG effects are really good. Um, yeah, it just makes it just makes the movie more realistic. Like I hate the, like these new movies again. Like they do their job, but they always feel a little off. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the, the the visual effects in this movie were fucking excellent. Again, for 1997, um, Spawn also came out in like 96, a like year prior to this, and those visual which, effects are kind of, which, which notoriously yeah. also <laughs> excellent. <laughs> but no, the movie's good. Wow. Um, but. The actual subject matter, okay, it's supposed to be a satire on fashion, but I have some issues with it, right? Because Rico, he 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 wants to go to he wants to join the Federation or whatever it's called to become a citizen, or he well basically right. to go into to be with his girlfriend. But his parents seem like they're pretty well off. His parents aren't citizens, correct? Because they never fought. They they they, right. they weren't in the uh, the military. Right, but his parents seem to be pretty well off, right? Yes. And I figured, like, if you're in the military, you become a citizen, and those are the people that's supposed to be, like, I guess, the government. They, they took over. Like, look, we fight for our country, um, so we we have the right to like dictate what the fuck happens. But it seems like everybody lives in it, they live in a utopia, and maybe I fell for it <laughs> because like the place is a utopia. Like where somebody, they, they live. Somebody is a bit of a fan. Yeah, right. but, a... but, but no, here's, here's the thing. Like every they, they seem to be, there's no racism, right? There's like black and white soldiers, but they're just incredibly violent toward each other, right? Yeah. <laughs> like in the in the military itself. So I don't know how good a job he did, but at the same time, like Rico, he's just a regular dude, but by the end of the movie, he's like all in, right? He's he's brainwashed. He's a right. he's a he's a he's a he's, civilian. So, okay. <laughs> oh, a citizen. He's a citizen at this point. So, so the the so this is based on a book, right? right. And yeah, the Robert book, Hedlund. yeah, right. Apparently, and the, the book, book was like was straight up, world. like the the see this utopia. All we have to do is be fascist, and we can have this, right? Like that's right. what the book is, and the movie is playing into that tongue in cheek. Right. It's just kind of mocking exactly what that book is. But I hear what you're saying. Maybe it did it a little too well. I mean, a lot of people didn't get it. You're not alone. Right. You're not alone. Like a lot of people are like, I mean, maybe we should let the military run everything. I don't think he did it. I, I, I see what he was doing. I understand. I understood it. But I'm like, I don't think he did a good enough job. Mm. Oh, I think so. And even and even and even years later, he says, "Yeah, like people didn't realize it." And I, because I, I read up on it after I finished it, and he's like, years later, he was like, "Yeah, this is a fucking satire. That's like you don't want this." But it's like, but I mean, like maybe I do want it. <laughs> like, it's like people so, live pretty well. Would it, have, would it have? Would have? Would it have hit home a little better if they weren't fighting bugs? Like if they were fighting, it's not like it's, other people. Like other humans or aliens, illegal aliens or whatever. Right, and that's the other thing. You can't humanize a bug. You can't right. humanize exactly. A bug. But but that but exactly. that's the point though, is that when we do military incursions, one of the first things you always do is you name 
your enemy something right. else, right? Right. Um, they, they, have those little, they have those vignettes when you're like watching TV. They like got the little kids like smashing bugs in the middle yeah. of the street and like, want to see more? Click this. I'm like, okay, I, I understood all of that. But my thing was, first of all, they never, they like, I can assume like humans are trash. Right? <laughs> so I can assume we probably started the war, right? The bugs just want to be left alone. They're like, hey, there's this asteroid. They're throwing asteroids at us. I'm like, no, they're not. <laughs> that's just you just made that shit up <laughs> to get us to just kill the bugs for no reason so we could probably take whatever resources they may have on their planet i get that but again we just watched we just looked at a fucking at a at a uh, uh what is it, a rotten tomato score of 86 percent for mortal Kombat. you know yes <laughs> So, look, look, so uh, the new one, the new one, uh, yeah, the audience. new one, the one that came audience. out two years ago. So, audience, so, yes, he did. Sure. I think he. I don't think he did it. It's 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 one of those things where you you do something and then you just leave it up to the audience to get it. And I got it, but at the same time, I'm like, I don't think you really did a good enough job because people because people are very jingoistic. We we we're, we're very yeah. We're very tribal, and like you didn't say what the what the aliens did. You never said who started the war. You can well, assume. Well, no, we no. Did. They said the that. the humans say that the bugs started the war. Yeah, they. But, well, yeah. So again, but is that, is that true? true? Right. Again, they they created this whole uh, what was it the the missile defense system around the Earth to take right. down the asteroids. And they're like, well, they're st- they're shooting these asteroids at us, so we had to build this. We had to do all of this stuff. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't, why would the bugs start attacking us for what? And when I'm watching, I'm like, why would they do that? That doesn't make any sense. Exactly. You know, you know, you know what that is? <laughs> that is your critical thought process. <laughs> like, but like they, and, and they, I think they, but they never stepped the- foot on Earth. Like they destroyed Buenos Aires with a quote unquote asteroid. Did Did you catch like, that? By the way. Did you catch that one? What the fact that it was what? Which that is that, that is Buenos, Buenos Aires? Aires. Did you catch that? Yeah, I was like, why is it in South America? I didn't because I didn't that's, know exactly. that's because that's where the Nazis were rumored. One of the places the Nazis were rumored to have escaped from Germany. Um, oh, after it, after, after World War Two. Yes. Oh. So the so idea of like, okay. why are these white people in Buenos Aires? It just so happens that Rico is a blonde haired. Yeah, you know, blonde right. haired, blue eyed, thirty uh, two year old, seventeen year old, <laughs> right. which I found right. like all of them niggas was in their late twenties when they were playing. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. Funny. What was it? What's that actor's name? Um, oh fuck, I can't remember. I saw that dude up close at Casper Comic-Con. Van Dien. Yeah, Casper Van Dien. Yeah. I saw that dude yeah. up close. Like that. That dude looks. He still looks like that. Like it's weird. I'm like. <laughs> It's like, you know, you put one of those McDonald's burgers on the <coughs> glass and they come back 25 years later and it looks the same. Yeah, like, yeah, that's yeah, that's what he looks like. It's a, it's kind of, it's, it's mm-hmm. weird. It's off-putting. Um, very nice guy, though. So, yeah, look, there's there's a lot of sort of Nazi things. Like, by the end... Um, oh, yeah. Pat, Neil Patrick Harris is in the Nazi, in the Nazi, Nazi garb and he's garb. like a fucking... Uh, yeah, he's in uh, he's like a telepath or some shit like that. That's yeah. the one thing. I'm like, okay, those are, these are straight... These are clearly Nazis. Yeah. And, and that's, but like, the, but the, they the all troopers are. themselves. They're all, all they weren't them. dressed like that. No, no, they, they, saying, they, they weren't, weren't dressed, dressed like, like that. But I think by the end of the movie, it's kind of like, huh? <laughs> like, uh, like, you know, I mean, it's the same thing. And, and look, I, I definitely can agree with your point that like he might not have made the, the, like, he may not have made the satire loud enough. But I think in Robocop, a lot of people don't get the satire in that either. Which is fucking right. insane to me, but I don't think they get that. Um, but at the same time, like watching that movie, it reminds me of like, you know, you you do this big. Re- you're like, you're like, hey, look, here are the Nazis, guys, and people are just like, I don't, I don't, I don't fucking get it. Do you think people get the satire in fu- in Star Wars? No, they don't get that one either. Like I saw an interview with Lucas, and he's like, <laughs> the Ewoks are. The Viet Cong. And they're like, well, wouldn't that make the empire the United? He's like, the United <laughs> States? Like, yes, nigga, I made this movie in 1980. Like, hello, or 83. Like, that's what I was saying. Like, that that was the point. But people never got that. They were just like, yeah, and the, the empire is bad, and but we like Darth Vader, and um, yeah, that's it. Darth Vader looked cool. He looked cool. And it's like, didn't quite get that one across. So, yeah, it's... um. Satire is not easy. There's not a lot of good satir, you know, satirist uh, directors anymore. Verhoeven is 
He did. He one can do it, but he can he also. Hollow Man. What was the last movie he did? Hollow Man, and I think that was it. Or something. No, like that's it. not the last movie was he's it? done. No, 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 no. He no, did no. something in like two, 2020. No, Hollow Man was early. No, he was did L. Man? He did L a couple of years ago, nigga. That is not a satirical movie. <laughs> like oh, in, in Hollywood. I mean, I meant Hollywood. Oh, like oh, just mainstream Hollywood. Yeah. Did he direct Hollow Man? Is that true? Did he? I, I think don't think so. that's right. That movie is terrible. I mean, it doesn't feel right, but <laughs> no, no, I, I, I no, he did right. two thousand. He did right. Hollow Man in yeah, two thousand. Yeah. What? Yep. He did it. <laughs> Was he drunk? Did he think invisibility made you right invincible? after Starship Troopers? Yeah, he did it three years after Starship Troopers. <laughs> Nigga, that's insane. That's yeah, insane. RoboCop Total Recall. Uh, Hollow. He did to- RoboCop Total Recall, Starship Troopers, and then Hollow Man. Again, was, Total uh, Recall. Do you think people? No, get no I'm thinking of the other the other director that went to jail. I mean, John McTiernan. The- <laughs> yeah, he did. Um, he did one more. He did one movie in 2003 with um, what's his name? God damn it. Samuel L. Jackson, he was dressed up like fucking bison <laughs> with the hat and the cape. What the fuck was that name of that movie? Oh, I don't even know. Man, he had a fu- basic, kind of- basic is the name of it. Remember oh, basic I in 2000? Oh, yeah, I remember <laughs> basic. Oh, I, I'd have to see that. I'd have to see it. Yo, oh, McTiernan, had a, McTiernan had a hell of a run. Yeah, he McTiernan, had a hell of a like, run, yo. Die Hard. Fucking Predator, Last Action Hero, The Hunt for Red October, 13th Warrior, Jesus Christ, The Thomas Crown Affair, Basic, All right, Rollerball, <laughs> Medicine Man. God damn, it, oof, it was downhill. I mean, you could start that from The Thomas Crown Affair, so I was not going to say that. I didn't really care for that movie. Oh, I like that movie. You could see, uh, no, what was her, what was her name like, in that yep. movie? Uh, it's a fake ass non James Bond movie. Get out! Yeah, of here. You, you got to see you got to see Rene Russo's nips in that movie. I do remember that. Did you? Yeah, you did. I mean, again, you got to see her nips. wasn't a lot else going on behind those nips. Pretty, uh, pretty much her back. But uh, you got to see him. Um, but yeah, he had but a did, run. But uh, Starship Troop is great. It's it's a very good movie. I understand why people yeah. love it so much. Uh, it holds up. Again, I was fucking blown. Like, like how the fuck? Wow. I also watch yeah. the Matrix again. Like, I don't know what the hell is going on. Why? Why don't they do fucking uh, practical effects anymore? Because it's more expensive. I mean, well, it's not more expensive, but it's <laughs> it's, it's it's like time. More time. Yeah. That's another. That's the other reason why I really love Alien and Aliens. Because yeah, everything in Aliens is fucking is is all practical, except for like a couple matte paintings when they're flying. That's about it, and those are miniatures. Yeah, it's put, actually put, it's a ton of miniatures. Is most of them? Yeah, it's man. But yeah, yeah it's Star Trek. Yeah. All right, mm. there you go. And now you can go play Hell Divers. Apparently, that's what has uh, gotten people all. Yeah, I really want. I played the first. I actually, I was one of the people that actually played. I put like seventy five hours into the first Hell Divers. I played uh, the first Hell Divers because I thought it was based on this trashy book series that I read, but it is not. <laughs> Where they fight Egyptian <laughs> gods or some dumb shit? No, they they they. It's a it's a it's a military science fiction shooter, and uh, like the world. <laughs> yeah, yo, Starship Troopers is fucking dope, yo. Mike, Mike, I wanted to Micah read the book, loves, but Michael loves military trash books. He really, does. I do, yo, I do, man. I, I do. heard the book like, sucks though. <laughs> People like, say the that's book what I heard. Sucks. I heard the book. I heard the book. Paul Verhoeven was like. <laughs> Uh, Adam, not he read it like the first couple chapters. Was like I'm done. <laughs> he didn't. I got finish. my own I, shit. Right. I get it. I was like, this is so dumb. I'm gonna make a movie to make fun of it. Yeah, basically. Uh, this, actually, this, Hell Divers the book is kind of like Starship Troopers. Like they end up going on like the 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 planet is like the the world is so fucked up that all of humanity basically lives in a giant dirigible and they have when they have to get <laughs> wait, resources wait, wait what <laughs> and they have to get resources when they have to get resources from the planet they send these these people to hell to dive into hell and to get the resources but like they're fucking monsters and shit uh on the planet so they got to get what they got to get and then come back up but like yeah all of humanity is 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 up on two dirigibles and like one of them explodes <laughs> like the arcs or some dumb shit yeah like arcs 2012 yeah. <laughs> remember that movie 
I yeah, did. I did. Yeah. Everybody you fled to Mexico at the end of that movie. Uh, makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Smart move. Oh, they figured it out. Uh, you know what? I have seen Basic. This movie was fucking terrible. This is a terrible movie. That I think was I had his this last on movie. DVD. Oof. Yeah, that was I, his had, last movie. I had Basic on DVD. That was a that was a blind buy for me. Yeah, Sad it absolutely was for me. Mm. Not good, man. Not good. <laughs> wow. Um, all right. Yeah, I don't have anything uh, else look, to check that. I I I watched uh I watched the acolyte, the acolyte. This this latest episode, episode five, uh was pretty good. The the big reveal is uh, who do you think you haven't seen it yet, Jay? Who do you think is behind the mask? Uh, I Darth think it's the the dude she's like working with, right? Which- uh, well, surprise, surprise! You've seen a fucking movie before. Yeah. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> like I, I know people yeah, are like yeah this, the that, so there's a dude in the in the in the little like uh in the shop the the, the apothe- apothecary what what do they call yeah, it that guy. <laughs> yep yeah that was yeah. Yeah. Okay. It, it was him it is him it is spoiler alert it's him right like yeah. surprise surprise and, and um, he got a big ass head and he's skinny and it's like oh, that, that's the master like, this, <laughs> this nigga's got the same body type and he's like yeah, it's so obvious <laughs> what the fuck All right. And um, the episode was very action packed. A uh, lot of, lot of, a uh, lot of fighting. A lot of, lot of. It, it's so, it's something that's pretty brutal for a Star Wars movie or a Star Wars show. I'll, I'll just say that. And um, the problem with the issue, uh, with the issue, the problem with the episode is it had the part two effect, right? Like that first, like last week's episode and this week's episode should have been one hour long episode like the mm-hmm. pacing just fell off it was like watching dune and then waiting for dune 2 to come out you know what right. i mean right i was really but upset the- when dune 2 ended and i was like oh so there's a third one coming fuck you <laughs> <laughs> tell me the rest of the story i want to know um oh you know what i caught up just real quick i caught up on uh the boys so obviously I think there's a new episode coming tomorrow by the time we're recording. Um, but I am all caught up as of today. I don't dislike this season. I actually think there, there's something really interesting going on in the season, which is everyone feels like everyone feels like they're cracking up. Like the world is, is eating itself. And it's almost like they are well aware, like that they, they kind of wrote that into the story of knowing that they're going to end it at season five. Like everything that's bad and misplaced and weird is all happening to the characters all at the same time. Like, I mean, the shit with Starlight is fucked up, right? Like she's got to go up against, I don't know, like Marjorie Taylor Greene or Sarah Palin, who <laughs> dumbass woman is supposed to be. What Name a Republican hillbilly woman. Um, and so like that's fucked up. Huey's life is like fucked up with his dad, which should be really interesting in this next episode. Um, Butcher is clearly dying, but also there's like a weird protectiveness to this whole thing, which was also weird. Um, MM thought he could be a leader and he's clearly not very good at it. Right. Um, uh, The French, the Frenchman, his, his life is kind of falling apart as he told that one dude, that story. And that kind of fucked up, and now he's like, ah, maybe I'm just gonna get back into drugs, and he's all fucked up. Um, uh, was it Kimiko or whatever? She's she's fucked up because she's like finding out more about her past, which is all fucked up too. Like everybody is in this bad situation, and Homelander is losing any last semblance of his humanity, which tells me that in the next season he is going to be an awful, awful human being um, or superhero. Um, That scene in the whole, like, him going to visit the people who raised him, that shit made me very uncomfortable. I wasn't, I didn't, I didn't like it. (laughs) No, I liked it, it, but I was just like. like It seems like that, that make people think he's the hero. No, yeah. Like, seems exactly like, like, yeah, yeah, bro. Get, get, get revenge on those people that treated you poorly. Like, Like, murder them. Like, I mean, like, yeah, get revenge, but like. Did you have to shoot all got a hole in the guy's fucking body? That was fucked up. Come on, jerk off. Dick. Yeah, he lasered was, his dick. Off, yo. Yeah, he was like, "Come on, 
You do it. Your life depends on it. The life, your life's in your hands. And he's just, la- just yeah, cackling like, for look, nine. I'll be like, look, nigga, just kill me. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm yo, not, I'm not, I'm not going to drink off. Yo. Like, knock it off. For anybody, <laughs> for, anybody that, for anybody that doesn't have a penis and doesn't realize, like, the gravity of the situation, yo, dudes will fight each other and be mortal fucking enemies. But they won't hit each other in the dick, yo. Like that's <laughs> like, come on, yo. Like that's like not to be low. cliche, but that's a low blow. You know? Like you know, what I'm right. like, like come on, yo. So like like if you need any more proof that Homelander has lost his ma- humanity, yeah. that's it. He laser the guy's dick off, yo. Like come on, bro. <laughs> come on, yo. No, it's just like I'm like I'm not going to be able to get an erection in here while you staring at me. And my life depends on you. Like, no, just kill me, nigga. It's like, take your pants down. I'm like, no, go ahead and do what you got to do, nigga, because I'm not doing this. Yeah, look, this I is only going to kill me. Look, this like, is only going to hurt kill for me. a millisecond. So <laughs> right. it's fine. What, whatever you're going to do, you're going to kill me. So whatever, dog. What was that movie? Was it Swordfish where the guy had to, like, hack into something? Yeah. And John Travolta had him at gunpoint. And then the, the this woman was giving him a blowjob. He's like, you better hack oh, into yeah, so yeah, yeah, that was Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman. Yeah. <laughs> Bring it into the FBI while this woman's giving you a blowjob. I can't and well, I can't. Kill you. <laughs> <laughs> he gave a time limit. Yeah, was like, he had, yeah, like, like, 30 like, seconds. Was like, come on, dog. Like. One, this is a this is a lot of pressure. Like, this is a lot of pressure. You're doing great, but this is a lot of pressure for me. Like, come on, Nigga, the two thousands um, were fucking terrible. Bro. Yo, we might have <laughs> we might have to we might have to go back and do Swordfish where we watch trash. Yo, that's oof. That movie, that movie is not good. And I'll we never forget what that movie for one reason. You one goddamn reason, right, reason nigga. Yeah, I, look, I told you that's this why I asshole. Know. This asshole. I used to know the- I'm cool. Yeah, this nigga <laughs> calls me this day the movie came out and was like 25 minutes and 13 seconds. I was like, all right, you just you gotta you gotta relax. When did that movie come out? 2001? 2001. <clears throat> you I was were like, 21 was at that point, nigga. What the fuck? Yeah, you were still playing Pokemon. I, seen a titty before. <laughs> 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 I mean, I went I, I, I look, I went I mean, to see the same. Was, yeah, I went to the theater. Very. Though. It was Halle but, Berry, and it, yeah. you know what the fucked up thing is. Looking back, it wasn't worth it. Not that she didn't look great; no, she looked it, wonderful. It's just like yeah, that was the movie, though. That was the yeah, movie. Swordfish. Yeah, like that, that's fuck, what you needed really to lend, lend your and fucking, artistic credits to. Both of them. Monsters Ball. I don't want to have that movie. I don't want to <laughs> having sex with Billy Bob Thornton naked either. Get out. She won. Hey, she won an Oscar for that. Oh yeah, that was the same year that fucking Denzel Washington won his Oscar, right? Yeah, that yep. was the the fiftieth anniversary of Sidney Poitier or whatever twentieth yeah. anniversary, yep. whatever it was. Look, bullshit. They both deserved it for better movies. Um, he should he should have got it for fucking uh, Malcolm X. And she should have got it for losing Isaiah. That would have been about that would have been a much more acceptable. Yeah. Um, but his his the same uh, year that Alonzo she got a was an amazing character. <laughs> oh no! Look he did his... movie. He was a fucking amazing character. Yeah, so but didn't kid. she get a Razzie the same year she won uh, an Oscar or like back to back or something, something crazy like that? And she went to the and Razzie. Catwoman came out like two thousand three or something like that. And yeah, she and she Razzie went. And she accepted it too. Like she accepted. She, yeah, she went. She went. Like, I know that movie was trash. Fuck it. It was. It was. Yeah, I bought a house off of that shit. Yeah, go <laughs> I got yourself. bills to pay. Like, you seen my career? <laughs> All right, uh, topics, Micah. Take it away. HBO has officially picked up Lanterns, the first live-action series created expressly for DC Studios under co-chairman, co-CEO James Gunn <coughs> and Saffron. The series has been given an eight-episode straight-to-series order by HBO with Chris Mundy of True Detective, Night Country, and, and Ozark. Oh, um, what the fuck? Um, <laughs> serving as... Yo, did did anything that I say resembled Siri? Like, what the fuck? Uh, show, serving ex- as showrunner and executive producer. Um, Damon Lindelof and Tom King will serve as the executive producers and co-write Lanterns with Monday. So, um, okay. Uh, the series will follow Hal Jordan and Jon Stewart, two members of the core an intergalactic team charged with defending a specific realm of the cosmos. 
uh, from evil through the use of rings that bestow an array of superhuman powers. This is from Variety, uh, which is why they're explaining what the fuck Green Lanterns are. Um, the logline... Uh, a new recruit, new recruit John Stewart and Lantern Legend Jordan are two intergalactic cops drawn into a dark Earth-based mystery as they investigate a murder in the American heartland. Look, I love uh, Green Lantern, um, the 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 character, uh, and some of the books. Um, Green Lantern is usually more uh, books are usually more cosmic than this. Um, so, uh, you know, it'll be, it'll be interesting to, uh, I, I get why they're doing like an earth bound like story. Cause you got to kind of ease people into stuff like this. Yeah. Um, and look, if it's just a, if it's just like a, like a gritty, you know, cop drama with, uh, with, super heroics that's fine i'm interested to see what the super heroics look like and how they'll be used right because green lanterns can make anything it's just up to their imagination like how is like how is having a power ring going to work in investigating an earthbound murder or mystery sorry yeah like it yeah look I it's i i don't know how they'll use it you know it will be interesting, um, to say the least. What I what I'm most interested in actually is the fact that this got moved to HBO, right? Like this is not just under WB. They're not just and they're not just saying like, oh, it's just it's HBO because like we just said so. Like the report is that HBO original films or whatever they call it, I can't. Remember, they're changing the name, I think, in 2025. But the the person who runs runs HBO is like this would have been under that new name. It's just that this is coming like this has got greenlit before that. Um, but it is an actual HBO original series. So this is getting the same level of quality and care as, you know, the last of us and fucking how, you know, house of the dragon, yeah, the game of Thrones, which is wild. Like that is, that's, that not, says a lot, man. That's really dope. It's not a max original. It's exactly. an HBO. Original. Exactly. And uh, yeah, I, look, I'm super pumped. I'm 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 super interested in this. I, I'm sorry, I misspoke. I misspoke. This is under that new umbrella. They were saying that the Penguin would have been under that um, would have would have been under the new HBO one, but just the timing was off. So like the same level of quality from both of those DC shows are going to be to the you know to the standard of like anything else you see on HBO, which is pretty pretty great for DC in general. So, like, if they, if they want to put their prestige shit over there, it's fine. <laughs> great. That that sounds wonderful. That's a great start. So, yeah. Yeah, True, true Detective with Green Green Lanterns. That's that's fine with me. Uh, let's fucking do it. Um, I, I you know, those two characters. Movie. Those two characters are, like, I know everybody likes Hal, but, like, Hal's kind of a... Uh, I mean, I guess it all depends on who's writing him, but, like, Hal's kind of a... How's the Green Lantern and Green Arrow were like a commentary when they had their book together, were a commentary on um, uh, how the average person saw politics. Where uh, Green Lantern was a little more conservative, right? It's a military guy all his life, and and he's you know he's a cop essentially, and um, Green Arrow is like super lib, right? Right. And they use that they use that com they use that comic to comment on, you know, the Reagan era, basically. Wait, and, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, there was politics and comics before the world went woke, like five minutes ago? Weird. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> someone must have, someone well, must have got know, a time it, machine and injected it like you do like the butter into a turkey. Crap. Well, you know, they didn't explicitly say it, right? Because they're both wearing green. It wasn't a uh, fucking red arrow and blue, uh, red lantern and blue arrow. You're so right. they didn't hmm. get it. You know what I mean? Subtle, <laughs> subtle. <laughs> you guys are dumb. Not you guys, but those guys are dumb. Um, yeah, no, look, I think this sounds dope. I think it, it sounds really, uh, really interesting. So we shall see. All right. Something I uh, something I don't really give a shit about uh, <laughs> Harry Potter, the, 
The I know people do. Uh, look, I'm on an island. I get it. I am. On, I am I'm, on an I'm right there with you. I am. Yeah, I know you, you go. two, two angry <laughs> ass niggas don't give a fuck about Harry Potter. Well, I do. Okay. Uh, look, I think this is. I think this is an. I, I think the creative team behind this is actually really impressive. Um, so yeah, it's um. HBO's reboot finally conjures up a creative team as J.K. Rowling gives her seal of approval. So, uh, so that means you and no, you trans, trans, no <laughs> trans people on this one. Like, you Absolutely and J.K. Not. Rowling are really excited for this. Yeah, uh, we're we're the same in so many ways. Um, <laughs> like I'm a human. She's almost one. That's it. That's it. We're fucking identical. Why the fuck does uh, she go HBO so in with that fucking? She's a fucking situation. rich <laughs> bitch like, asshole. That's weird. It's <laughs> such a weird stance. Like, yo, relax. So you have all the money in the world. No one's calm down. You literally don't have to care about anything. You just yeah. don't have to care about it. Why can't you be one of those type of rich people who hates all society and just is like, I'm going to the moon? Just be one of them. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> HBO, in association with Warner Brothers Television, has named Francesca Gardner, Gardner uh, of sure. Succession and His Dark Materials and Killing Eve as the showrunner and executive producer, and Mark Mylod, uh, whose credits include Succession, Game of Thrones, and The Last of Us, as executive producer and director of multiple episodes of the upcoming HBO Harry Potter original series. A lifelong, a brief log line, Tired Man, uh, has also been released, which reads, The series will be a faithful adaptation of the beloved Harry Potter book series by author and executive producer J.K. Rowling. The series will feature a new cast to lead a new generation of fandom, uh, full of the fantastic details and much-loved characters Harry Potter fans have uh, loved for over 20 years. Uh, so it's just them retelling the the same books, uh, as but in long form. Is, yeah, is that it? Largely, All I mean, right. there's a there, but there's a lot in those books that are, are, is left out. Yeah, uh, the, yeah. I'm not, I'm not knocking it. I'm not, yeah. I'm not, uh, I'm not knocking it. You can get into way more detail, right? That's why book people love the books more than the adaptations, right? Like you get way more detail in a book than you do a movie. You'll get way more detail in a television series than a than a movie. So I thought know, you were gonna say you get way more detail like in that Game of Thrones book that you guys are all mad about where a lot of <laughs> rape and murdering of children you somehow want on TV for some fucking reason, you bunch of weirdos. Nigga, I thought look, I thought uh, I watched this latest episode. Have you seen it? The second episode? You haven't seen it. No. Yeah. No. Okay. There's a, there's a, uh, I'm going to spoil a little bit of it. Okay. There's a, uh, there's a funeral for the child, right? For the decapitated baby, right? There's a, there's a funeral and they, they have the baby, the, the little boy sitting there with, you know, a stitched up ass head, right? No, that's not it. A- <laughs> they show that right like they show a dead body they show a dead kid and i you know that's stuff like that is a trigger for me for my own personal reasons which is probably why i went a little hard last time i don't i don't like to see dead children no you don't um, like me either yo come on yo. but uh, i've seen a child's coffin it's it's the most horrific thing i've ever yes. had to see in my entire life they're parading this fucking dead kid and they hit a speed bump, nigga. They hit a pothole. And I swear to God, I thought that, the, like, to. Yo, look, please tell me the damn coffin ain't pop out the fucking thing. <laughs> nigga, don't do that. Don't do that. Thankfully, <laughs> thankfully, it did not. Oh, all right. These yo, like, people have a little bit of restraint. If it was <laughs> those other niggas from that first show, you know good and goddamn well oh! that head would have been rolling off of that nah, goddamn. Nah. Come on, man. you can't put that on TV. That's insane. Bro. That's insane. <laughs> oh, but look, I, look I, I can guarantee you there's somebody in our Discord right now is like, well, in the book, that head did roll. <laughs> and they college like, for not the doing book, it. The head rolled and then a fucking dog picked it up and ran down the street with it. Like, <laughs> come on, man, what's wrong with y'all niggas? <laughs> we don't need to see it. We get it. We got it. The kid's dead. <laughs> Yeah, the fucked up thing is. It happened in the you, coffee table, by the way. 
Yeah, that exactly. Was I was like, yeah. that's why I can't watch that movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that shit sounds insane to me. But yeah. like, that's why it's really weird because you know most of the defense of those books over the TV show is, hey, there's a lot more sort of you know interesting details and stuff like that, which I have no problem with. I, I totally understand it, and you know that that sounds awesome. But a lot of times when people are arguing like, no, but in the book, it's always the most horrendous shit. I'm like, why do we need to see that? I got it. They killed the kids. Like, yeah, <laughs> but you need to see the murder and then some more like a little bit of rape on top. Like, all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> I think, guys, you're you're getting a little too in the weeds. It's okay. <laughs> we we got it. <laughs> that shit's funny. You know, if they had dropped that baby – like it was like a Nigerian funeral, yeah. You know, I'd have lost. It. <laughs> like, come on. Hey, yo, I was, I was, I was, I was, I literally sat there and I'm like, yo, please don't do this. Please don't <laughs> fucking do it. <laughs> I didn't even want to see the child, right? But like, all right, fine. There's a child. Please don't fucking do this, like, because the, it's the child's head is sewn together, yo. Know, like, uh, you know, with shoestrings. Like, what the fuck, yo? Know, like, <laughs> don't have that fucking kid's head fall, man. Don't do it. Thankfully, yeah. they didn't do it. Here's something else that doesn't need to happen: uh, a Street Fighter movie is set for 2026 from Sony movie. and Legendary Pictures. Um, yes. They announced right. that uh, Sony, right? No thanks. Uh, right. Yeah, that's, that's uh, not good. <laughs> they make really good movies as of late. Okay. Uh, Sony will dis- Sony will distribute the film, co-develop, and produce it with Capcom. Legendary announced its acquisition of a live-action film and TV rights for Street Fighter, one of the most iconic and influential series in the history of video games. In April 2023, the games revolve around an international martial arts tournament where fighters from around the world compete to prove their strength and abilities. Um, the Ooh, franchise no, game. Not, I, I know, I know. No, it isn't. Uh, it's not a tournament. It, it, <laughs> Never been right. a tournament. It's just a bunch of niggas are fighting for no reason. <laughs> it's right. The, the I don't franchise. Ever been a tournament. I I think I think the original Street Fighter was a tournament, right? With Sagat as the as the the guy you got to beat at the end. Um, okay, but but and I think Shadowloo. I think the whole tournament thing comes from was organized by Bison uh, because he needed to find the best fighters in the world because his psycho power is draining his fucking uh, body and he needs to find the best fighters in the world so that he can implant his consciousness into their bodies. That's that's all Bison wants to do. Bison is the most pro trans character ever <laughs> because he wants to. He wants to transition into Cammy. He wants to transition into all those dolls. He wants to transition into Ryu. Yeah. He wants to transition into whoever knows how to fight. This is a trans positive action movie. Street cool. Fighter is the most trans positive video game series out there. <laughs> all right. That's that is the title of the show. Let's see what, what happens. <laughs> <in the movie. laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, look, man. The previous films like uh, the the masterpiece starring Raúl Julia and a and a literally coked up Jean Claude Van Damme. Um, who wants to come with me? Uh, who wants to go home? And who wants to go with me? <laughs> like, all right, all right. God yeah, bro, damn, like, yo, like, bro. The camera's not even rolling. What are you doing? <laughs> like, <he's just> <laughs> of that entire movie. Uh, and stars, uh, it stars Raul Julia, Jean-Claude Van Damme, and, um, and the ageless wonder that is the original Chun-Li, um, Ming-Na Huen, uh, and, she and Street Fighter, the, she really could, she uh, and, uh, she should, how about that, how about she should, it's fine. Hey, I'm fine with that. I feel like everyone would be like, no, that casting makes total sense. Like, yeah, you know, she's like 55. Yeah, you know what? Chun Li's 55 now. Big deal. <laughs> Do it. Chun Li's like 55 in Street Fighter 6. So it was. All right. Well, then um, she got the thighs for it. Like, what's going on? Like, <laughs> I mean, I don't think anybody got the thighs for that. But uh, I don't know. Look, I, I, I've looked on Instagram. I feel like they might be. <clears throat> well, you, 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 not. They're not acting. I don't, I don't, right. 
There you go. That's what I'll say. She's with her body yeah, double right. whenever she's fighting. <laughs> <laughs> they just zoom in on her thigh. Whenever they need a, really whenever they need a, right. Whenever they need a, whenever they need a wide shot, <laughs> just use a fucking body double. Yeah, uh, even if it's just a walk and talk. Um, look, I don't, I don't know if I want this. I don't know if I want I, it because I know I do game, not want it. If they don't fighting really game, I do. I do. I right. want to see how bad. I want to see if they can make a movie worse than the original. I really do. I think they can. I, I think they. I think it's possible. Like, there's a lot of different threads that um, that Street Fighter has, but they're like they're like two main ones. Like the whole Shadowloo versus like the, this terrorist organization versus everyone, and then there's the then they've introduced Neo Shadowloo, which is like they trying to they they they're like they're like terrorists for a new age, right? Like like positive terrorism i guess i don't i don't know i don't know ed is part of it so who fucking cares um and then there's like all the ryu and ken and akuma shit right and i don't um i don't know how i don't know how those things are going to translate like street fighter 6 has a story mode and it's all about like people walking around on the street picking fights with each other and then feeling good about it afterwards. Like, hey, okay. That's what I want. Like, I want two hours cool. of that. <laughs> Just two hours of Fight Club? Yeah. <laughs> like that, that one scene in Fight Club? That's but they're right. actually willing to fight each other? <clears throat> yeah. Look, yo, this shit is not going to work, yo. You don't this think so? not going to work. No. Nah. I know it's I'm, not. I know it's I'm, not. I mean, the, the one, it's Sony. 100% is going to be garbage. Um, <laughs> it's, that's just their, that's their new brand. Just trash. It's not even that new. Um, the other part of it is, yeah, I don't even know. Like Mortal Kombat story, like their universe is actually le- like decently fleshed out, right? Like you can make you can make an interesting story. Like the story they came up with in the original Street Fighter movie was so bizarre because there was no, they didn't have any real structure to work off of, and they tried to come up with something and it made no sense whatsoever. I, I feel like you're going to get more of that because it, there's no reason for all of these characters from around the world to be together unless you're doing some sort of take on like a Kumite type of thing. And that's – I don't know that that really works in in 2026. I mean maybe it will. Maybe the world will be in the end times and that's this is all people want as a Street Fighter movie. But um, likely not. So I, I think their biggest issue is they don't have any structure to build a real story off of. So. Yeah, man, this is not a this is not a good idea. These characters uh, also look a certain way. Like, all right, I get it. Right, like, let's say you get uh, let's say you get that big dude from Reacher to play Guile. You gonna oh, you, you gonna put a broom, you you gonna put a fucking broom on his head, yo? Like the high top fade. Jack <laughs> Reacher with a fucking with a fucking triangle high top fade, yo. Like that's no, what, not gonna work. Yo. No, what's the what's the dude from those like undisputed movies or whatever? Scott At Scott Atkins. Like he's that's not gonna work movie. either. Now he got to be one of these characters. Is Ryu Japanese or he's just like a like a white dude with a beard? Ryu like, is, did, did, is did, he just got a Japanese, Japanese name. Yeah, Ryu is supposed to be Japanese. Yes. Okay. He always looked like a white dude to me. Well, yeah. he always sounds like one too. I have to, I have to change him to, uh, I have to change him to, uh, to, I have to change the language to Japanese because I can't, I can't deal with, uh, can't deal with, with that. I mean, Scott Atkins could play a uh, bearded uh, Ryu. <laughs> he I mean, can. he looks like him. That's what I'm saying. He looks like him. <laughs> That's about it. But, uh, yeah, I don't know what the fuck. I guess the movie's gonna not be. It's not gonna be good. How are you no one's going to look no. like the, the characters. Uh, who's going to do not, like, who's going like to who's gonna be Blanca, right? Like, well, I, remember how they d- they did Blanca in um, Dalsam? Yeah. In, was, in that it was, movie? It was Carlos Blanca. Carlos Blanca, guys. <laughs> Carlos Blanca. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. They did an experiment on me and they gave me the ooze. I'm mad about it. It was Gile's it, best friend, Carlos Blanca. <laughs> And okay, 
Are they going to do all these new characters that most people don't know unless you've played the games in the last like 20 years? Or are they going to do like, like the OG Luke? Characters? No, no, no. Like Luke, the guy with giant fucking forearms. His forearms are bigger than his biceps, nigga. Like, it, it looks like he that, has Popeye phys- forearms. Yeah, that's that's yeah. physically very weird. And then who is this like giant Amazonian chick? Marissa? Yeah, yeah. she's uh, she's um, uh, an Italian woman. Uh, and uh, she's actually pretty easy to use. Um, look, this, look, Bison came out for Street Fighter VI today, uh, as we are recording. And in honor of Bison, uh, I would like to paraphrase a win quote that I will adapt to fit this story, and then we can be done with it. Um, Sony and Legendary, what a horrendous combination of garbage. <laughs> <laughs> I think you know um, Oh, shit. <laughs> That he says right. that in the game. <laughs> he says that he says that to Ken. He says, not just weak, but also pathetic. What a horrendous combination of garbage. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> this is like Magneto level bars. Okay, next up in topics. Uh the Fantastic Four filming um and its place in the MCU are actually confirmed. Uh, by Kevin Feige, and not in that fake way that people say confirmed on YouTube, like confirmed like the the person actually um, said things that make sense. Um, quote, yes, yes, very much. It's a period, uh, referring to uh, the Fantastic Four being a period piece. There were a lot of smart people who noticed that the cityscape didn't look exactly like New York that we know or that existed in the, in the 1960s in our world. Those are smart observations, I'll say. So, um, then he goes on to mention, you know, playing with the Fantastic Four in Multiverse um, of Madness. So obviously, it's not taking place. It's taking place somewhere else in the multiverse. So that is clear. Um, the other thing he says is that they are returning to Hall H, um, by the way, which we'll talk about a little bit later. And uh, Feige says that Fantastic Four starts filming the day after. Um, the day after Comic-Con. So it's starting to film at the end of July. So the day after Comic-Con, quote, um, is the first day of filming on Fantastic Four. So that's when it lenses. When is Comic-Con? Out. July. End of July. The end of July. So okay. you got, is it you got really to- that exciting to meet um, celebrities at Comic-Con? <laughs> Not if you say <laughs> it like serious. that. <laughs> no, I have to say it because we're going to be waiting movie. forever. They're gonna be waiting forever in like whole age and just kind of walking I'm around. Never do that shit again. Never is do it, that shit again. Like no. I, we've heard that story, but like, is it like is it is it, is it exciting? Because they're not because they're, they're not going. Sure, I'm sure they're going to be there, right? I'm sure the the cast of Fantastic Four is going to maybe, maybe not because they're going to start shooting the day after. No, they're maybe probably going to be there. They'll probably be there because like so they literally be no they flight. literally flew they literally flew them. To Comic Con one year, and they were like flying back to Europe to to record them like in two days or something. No, they'll be there. Okay, yeah. so they're not going to have any footage of, at all of the n- no footage of the movie because it's not started yet. So they're just going to be the cast, and they may show concept. They may show concept art. That we, <laughs> that like, we I don't. Now, sure. granted. But now, granted. Like, it's it's Marvel going to Hall H. That doesn't just mean um, Fantastic Four. That means. Like I no 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 blade. <laughs> no. They might show a, they might show a picture a of a knife stuff. and be like, one day. Um but I mean they would have footage from like probably I think Ironheart has already filmed or I think it's mostly filmed. Um Deadpool yeah, I mean, Wolverine will have already been out by then, right? That would have already been be out. Anyway. Um, they're probably going to do their big announcements of like the names of um, the Avengers movies and things like that. They would have footage of Captain America, um, A Brave New World. Okay. So they'll, they'll have plenty of stuff. I mean, look, Marvel's presentations <laughs> at Hall H are really fun, right? Like if you're in all that shit, it's pretty fun. I did it when I was in my late 20s, right? Mm-hmm. In my 40s? No. No. Nah. <laughs> I don't have the patience to sit there all night. What the fuck? Like, yeah, no, for 10 hours? That's insane. 
Yeah. No, it wasn't. That's lud- that's ludicrous to me <laughs> to, to be sitting that's- in line with a pe- bunch of people that haven't showered and they're just sitting there waiting to get into the holy so they can wash some shit early. Nah, yeah, I'm good. Yeah. That's, that's, that's my thing. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't, wor- I don't have enough. I don't worship enough people to do that shit. I don't worship anyone to just sit there and wait for them to come out on stage to uh, tell me about some shit they're going to be in. That's why I asked. Is it like, is it worth it? Is yeah. it fun? Like, I don't, I don't like see. The, the thing you gotta, is, you got to be into it. Yeah, you you got to be, be into it. it. And even then, like, I mean, we had a, we had a story to tell, right? But yeah, it's not an interesting story. <laughs> like, no, it's, it's not that like, interesting, right? It was like, oh, it was kind of fun or whatever. You know, we sat there for 13 hours. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, uh, it, it, it killed our day. Yeah. Because, like, you can't do anything else. Yeah, you don't get a ticket and, and come back and shit. Right. Like, and this was before, like, there, there's a way that you can scam it and get, like, press passes and all that now. But this is before we did all that. Yeah. So, and, you know, it, for the average person who is not press or whatever, like, you know, you got to sit there. You got to sit there all day. Like, and it's Saturday, yo. Like, that's the, like, that's that's the, the day. day. Yeah. Right. Nobody comes on Sunday. That's kids' day. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. I told my, I told myself I'd never Gross. do it again unless my kids unless my kids want to do it. Yep, that's it. And um, and I'm not even encouraging. Yeah, I'll, 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 and, and, look, and I'm parents, not even encur- and I'm not even encouraging it. Hey, do you hear San Diego Comic Con? I never heard of that shit. Sounds whack. Don't go to that. I don't know what that is. <laughs> I'm not. Look, I didn't even live in San Diego. What the fuck are you talking about? Is that Spanish? What, what word are you saying? Um. No, I, I don't think I would ever, like, would I go to San Diego Comic-Con again, like, with my kid? Sure. Would I stay in line for, like, those hours on end? No, I wouldn't. And look, I, I know, you know, there's plenty of people who who would disagree because they're um, giant children, in my opinion. But adults ruined it. They ruined it because they started staying in line overnight and they ruin kids' ability to go in line with their parents at a reasonable hour, even if you got there early in the morning, to get into Hall H. They ruined it. So it's like, if you have kids, <laughs> you're not going to stand outside all night with them. That's bullshit. And so then it's a bunch of fucking 20-year-olds who've just taken that opportunity away from kids to enjoy it. And I, I was like, no, nah, I'm not going to do that. Like, the last year we did that was kind of the last year before people started staying in, over, staying in line overnight. And I was like... I don't give a fuck if Robert Downey Jr. is out there hand, giving out hand jobs. I'm not staying outside all night. <laughs> no. With the Iron Man glove on, by the way. The authentic. Yeah, I don't. Like, no. That would deter me from standing in line. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> I'm like, I'm good. Come on, no buddy. Thanks. Come on. You want the hand like? No all right. All right, Robert. Do it. Um, yeah, I just don't see it. I just, a bunch of grown ass men just sitting there just talking about comic books, waiting oh, fucking no, these 15 are- hours to getting. Oh, and these are the words. Look, 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 look. You don't want to be in that line. You don't want to be in that line. What was it? Uh, what was the dude he had on the he had on the silk club shirt? He had, he had on a the club shirt. Yeah. I wouldn't have been a fight. He had a bottom uh, <laughs> uh, a comic book club shirt on. I'd probably end up in a fight. Yeah, no, nah, man. Like <laughs> fans, shut up. fans ruin everything. Yeah, basically. well, humans, humans do. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, that's true. All of it. Fandom. So, so there you go. Fantastic Four um, filming just uh, after Comic Con, starting the film, and clearly Fantastic Four is in uh, another part of the multiverse. Great. Yeah. He's, so, you think we'll see the Council of Reeds, or is that too is that too uh, soon mm. for this? I think you right? could see like, that in an Avengers nice movie, maybe. I I, f- I figure if you're gonna do that something like that, maybe like leave it for like an Easter egg or something, right? Like just to see Krasinski and Ian Gruffelfold or whatever the fuck his name is, and yeah, you know a bunch of people. But they kind of already did that with uh, Quantum Mania with all those Kangs, and um, you know maybe that was the bad omen. Maybe maybe that caused that nigga to go crazy and shit. Well, he just won an award that he paid for, so you know. <laughs> No, they paid him to come. No, like, they you, they I'm paid sorry. him. I'm they sorry. paid him. He didn't pay for that. You don't know what the fuck Hollywood Unlocked is. Nobody knows what Hollywood Unlocked is. Should have stayed locked. <laughs> Stay over there. Nobody gives a fuck. Um, yeah. Dude, yeah, you threw that woman around that car like she didn't weigh nothing. Yo. Relax. Um, all right, so we already talked about 
Marvel coming back to Hall H. So there you go. Speculate amongst yourselves as to what they will talk about. We gave a couple of suggestions there. All right, and look, uh, I'm not here to deter people from. I'm not here to deter people from like go. wanting to do it. Like I experienced it once, and it was fun, and that's all I need. And yeah, but I, if you're into this stuff, if you're into this stuff, seriously, you should do it. You should do it at least once. It's a fun uh, experience. Get the, get the authentic experience. It is a fun experience. I, I, we we're, we're becoming real negative in our advanced age. Uh, and I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to do that too much. Um, <laughs> no, but no, I'm I am going to be honest. I'm never. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I'm never going to do that shit again. <laughs> no, look, look. The 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 time that we stayed in line for ten hours to get into Hall Age, that was that was a lot, right? The year before that, we went, or maybe I guess it was the year before that, or two years before that, something like that. We went and we stood in line in the morning, and we stood in line for like. Two and a half hours and then got into Hall H. That's how it used to be, right? Like, oh, you had maybe two hours, maybe three hours, and then you got into Hall H and you just stayed in Hall H all day. So there was like some things that were kind of cool, some things that were not great, but then you got to stay in all day and see everything, right? So you'd see like the Warner Brothers panel and the Fox panel and like all of that. And then, you know, Marvel and DC would normally um, <coughs> be the two at the end and everything else. So you got to see a lot of cool shit. Like I was on the panel when um, for the for Watchmen, like the 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 Snyder movie, and that's when I learned. I was like, "Wow, Zack Snyder is kind of a crazy person in real life." Like that's weird. Like he's just, his energy is fucking odd. Um, but I got to see all of that stuff and like trailers for all of those things ahead of time, and that was kind of cool. And the actors were all there and everything else. So like those moments were great. But when it started getting past like two three hours, like this is not, and you don't have press. It's not. It just doesn't feel worth it to me. So, but teach us own. It's something everyone should experience. Um, all right. What the fuck? Brought to you by JTD from the Edit That Out podcast. Micah. Uh, a woman recently got the shock of her life when she entered her bathroom and saw a full-grown white boa constrictor snake hanging out of her toilet. Exotic snakes crawling up from toilets may not be worthy news uh, in countries like Australia or Brazil, so that eliminates those two, where the slithering reptiles are virtually a part of everyday life. Really? They're a part of everyday life? <laughs> snakes coming out of, <laughs> out of everyday life no, in Australia and Brazil? Yeah, <laughs> no, 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 no. No, thank you. India, uh, but as uh, that is incorrect. Uh, but as a person living in a bustling city, is not the kind of thing you'd ever expect to see. Mm. However, one resident almost had the almost had a heart attack when she entered her bathroom and found an albino boa constrictor coming out of her toilet. Uh, the shocked woman slammed the bathroom door shut immediately and called emergency services. Burn it turned out the snake was <laughs> the snake was a fellow resident of the apartment building who had simply gone out to explore its pipe drain system. Uh, you got a guess as to where this is? Bangkok. It is not Bangkok. What is the worst place on Earth? Florida? Russia. Thank, thank you. That's okay, it. I don't know Russia. who you're talking about. You know, okay, I was going to say you have to clarify. <laughs> I, feel like we were both, I feel like we're both in the running. Like, <laughs> I, I mean, running. look, uh, six and one, half a dozen in the other. That was a fucking <laughs> coin. Uh, that was a coin flip if I've ever heard one. <laughs> oh, yeah, Russia. That makes sense. Yeah, but like mm. Moscow. Which I hear Moscow is quite beautiful. Is, uh, I ain't going, but uh, I hear it's quite nice. Ah, oh, yo, they got toilet snakes, man. I ain't going. I, look, I I like traveling. I like I'm traveling. Never I've never had a desire to go to Russia ever, ever, Who ever, ever. Has ever. a desire ever. to go to Russia? I I wanted to at one point, and then I was like, then I saw a video, a compilation video of people just falling in front of cars on dash cams, and, <laughs> and like the cars just getting destroyed because like wires were all over. I was like, yeah, I'm good. You know what? Also black. I don't need to be there. No. <laughs> Yeah. Very, very you'll racist. Be the, you'll, be the, you'll be the you'll be the the small white dot and an all white canvas, small black dot and an all white canvas. You'll you'll stand out. <clears throat> no, uh, I'm good. 
Yeah, no, yo, toilet snakes, not uh, not not doing it. We had a snake, we had a snake in our um, we we in our garage. We have a uh, our water heater is is in our garage because we we bought a house that doesn't have a basement for some re- for some reason, <laughs> and um, and uh, there was a snake in there uh, stuck on a mouse trap trying <laughs> to eat the fucking mouse stuck on the trap it's pretty fucking horrific is it still there you're too scared uh, to go in there you're like nah we just burned the garage down we just bricked it up we, we uh we we tag teamed it we tag teamed it. it was stuck it was stuck on the sticky trap so it couldn't do nothing but uh did you have yeah, to pick up the snake or did your wife do it we did it she held the bag <laughs> and I, I i have a grabber i have a grabber for uh, just such an occasion. And oh, I like an old person shit. who can't get shit <laughs> from a top shelf? Yep, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and that's why I had uh, to get rid of fucking vermin. I hate animals. I hate them. All of them. <laughs> I mean, that's fair. But that that is that is, uh, that is vermin. Like, that is not a... Uh, whatever. Not cozy up to you at night? No, whatever. I hate them all. Um, all right, Terrence. Okay. Um, a man sneezes intestines out of his body at a public restaurant. The fuck? <laughs> <laughs> like, cool. A 60-year-old uh, man sneezed so forcefully that it caused a portion of his intestines to exit through a surgical site while eating with his wife at a local restaurant as per the independent. Uh, according to a case study published mm. in the American Journal of Medicine, remain 2024, Man had, history, he, man had a history of prostate cancer, and just 15 days before the incident at the diner, he had a cystectomy, a surgical procedure to remove his urinary bladder, leaving him with a healing abdominal wound. Uh, yeah, so they had, they, they did, he did a surgery, and he went to eat at this restaurant, and he sneezed his intestines out of his surgical wound. That is, uh, mm. that's wild. Um, it well, said on the morning of the sneezing did. event that, yeah, the, on the morning of the sneezing event, the doctor confirmed that a surgical site had healed properly and that the staples holding the surgical wound together could be removed. Feeling a sense of relief and account, feeling a sense of relief and accomplishment, he and his wife decided to commensurate the occasion, commemorate the hell, <laughs> totally just make, uh, the occasion, and went out to a celebratory breakfast at the diner. Yeah, Ow. I mean, that's unfortunate for him. Um, like his intestine came out. He said, "Okay, how, so during how breakfast, how loud was that the, scream? How loud was that scream, yo? It had to have been insane." I don't know. During breakfast, the man sneezed forcefully, followed by coughing. He immediately noticed a wet sensation and pain in his lower abdomen. Looking down, he had observed several loops of pink bowel protruding from his recent surgical oh. site. He later, he later he related that he was. Unsure, unsure of how to proceed, so he covered the exposed intestines with his shirt. Push he initially decided in. to drive himself to the hospital, but concerned that changing his position might injure his bowels, his wife re- requested an ambulance. In a state of shock, the man covered just the protruding mask with his shirt and opted to call it. No, because I'm a bitch. I'd have probably passed out. <laughs> <You gotta die. laughs> like, he was like, I'd have <laughs> Fuck. Nah, you just say you the just say you take one of those clean spoons. Goddamn. No, you just take one of those clean spoons from the diner table and you just fucking you just put it back in. Christ. It's like just put it's like pushing uh like rings of calamari back into a uh back into your stomach. That's wild. You can guess nah, where took place. I'd have thrown up. Like I'd have looked down at it. I just lost my mind. That's insane. Oh, yeah, this is rough, God. man. Yeah, they they patched him up in the Paramedics covered the wound with a pad and administered painkillers to the man before swiftly transporting him to a nearby hospital. Uh, so they had to, they stitched him up. I Yikes. mean, that is, that is really unfortunate. Like, you imagine you're sitting at the table, like the guy sitting at the table, like next to them, you hear all the screaming and you look over and you're like, like, what the fuck, man? Like, yeah, you'd probably what? vomit. Like, Holy oh. shit. <clears throat> Bro, are you okay? Like, yeah, like, I just popped an O-ring like, well, 
Well, when The Rock saw it, The Rock thought, oh, well, hmm, he might be hurt. Um, <laughs> uh, the Rock better go take a shower now so he can go eat. <laughs> yeah, who gives a shit? That's why. <laughs> I love that clip. Yeah. It's so oh, no. He was an God asshole damn. in that match. <laughs> he really was. Um, <clears throat> yeah, no, that's insane. That's absolutely insane. Um, but again, yeah, that pain. Guesses. Oh, where um, was this? I think it was uh, the seventh circle of hell. Well, uh, we're there. Be a bunch of different places on the phone. Now th- this feel this feels like a this feels like a, an American thing. Our health our healthcare system is not great. I feel like they gave, they duct taped this nigga's uh, abdomen up and send them out out to the silver diner or whatever. <laughs> the double T. Oh man! Well, uh, uh, no, you know, I think this is, um, I think this is Jay's people. Uh, well, you got a lot of, you got, got, a, lot you got of a lot of, now. you got a lot of people now. You're you're the original Jay's people, not the current Jay's people. I think this is, uh, I think this is, I think this is India. I think this is India. Uh, this happened in Florida. <laughs> what I say, nigga. <laughs> What I say? All right. Get your health care right. shit up. Yeah. Get out of here. Also, again, one of the worst places on earth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They Pretty just bad. using duct tape down there. They don't Jesus use real Christ. Christ. Yo, his intestines just popped out of his fucking stomach. That happens mm. every day in Florida. Ish. Does it say what area of Florida? I'm just curious. Uh, it just says a 63 year old Florida man. That's it. Mm. Does it? Does it matter? I mean, let's get real. Mm. I mean, I need something to make fun of my wife for. Just say it. That happen, just say it happened in her town. Why just say that? Nah, nah, nah. I'm not. This this relationship is not built on a house of lies. <laughs> it's, it's, it's built on on mocking uh, where each of us are from. All right, that's fair. Just 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 <laughs> just on uh, point counting alone. Right? Like that's what a yeah. real relationship is. Who, yeah, keep who wins keep tit for tat. I mean, that just makes sense. Um, all right. My story, cicada-infused Maylord shots um, are all the buzz at Lombard Brew Pub. Okay. I don't know where that even is. Oh, okay. Now I do. Um, yeah. I uh, want to try a shot of um, that won't be around for another 17 years. A suburban brew pub is pouring up shots – of the cicada infused Maylort um, to celebrate the arrival of two ancient broods of the insect. Um, y'all drinking um, cicada infused liquor? No thanks. Well, oh, Micah don't drink, so that's an automatic yeah. fucking no. <laughs> darn, heck yeah, I was, but mm, darn. All right, all right, fine. You, would you have a cicada infused Sprite? Oh, no, that's whatever not it is. That's 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 milkshake that anymore. I don't drink Sprite or milkshakes anymore. Mm, darn. <laughs> I don't like drink water and Gatorade. Fine, and, and, Look, and they don't blue blue up. blue ice cicada. You can't you can't infuse cool blue uh, Gatorade and and cicada. It just don't work. It don't work. <laughs> it's not how uh, the science don't line up. It just don't line up. Um, Jersey. Um, not bad. Not bad. Because uh, because the cicadas came. On, yeah, the cicadas was in the, like the northeast, right? Aren't they I coming down know. to y'all? They already. If they did, they already came, right? I ain't see them niggas. I ain't see them. Mm. Thankfully, yeah, y'all got off lucky this time. Um. Yeah, they're five dollars each. You can drink some uh, Wait a flavor minute. reminiscent right. of succulent. <laughs> <laughs> I just clicked on this story. Okay, yeah, is is a cicada infused drink? Just pouring a drink they and just sticking just a through a cicada. In it? <laughs> it's infused, man. It gets infused. It's infused. No, nigga, they just no. threw a bug in some liquor. No, they put man, they yo. put the bugs in they put the bugs in the bottles too. It's infused. No, nah, yo, no, nah, get the fuck out of here, yo, get the fuck out of here, yo. That's All what right, inf- that's what infused means. Work. Put a bug in it. That's infused. <laughs> this is some white people shit. Man. Um, would I take a shot of this? Yes. Uh, sure. Yeah. Because it's some white people shit, and that's what yeah. you would do. Yeah, I would do it. Like, why? I'm not. I'm not some fucking little bitch. Get out of here. 
Um, I saw somebody, yeah. I'm somebody, a bitch. I just drink bugs. <laughs> yeah, like a man, like a real. <laughs> man. It, it's amazing what you can bait people with. Of like, stop being a bitch. <laughs> Go and eat this bug. <laughs> like, I mean, I guess I'll just be a bitch. You'll, you'll I'll have to eat the bug. Right. Like, what the fuck? What is what is malort? I don't know. I've never had it. Mm. So. It's some sort of alcohol. I bet the bug was alive before they, they put it in there. and it just Like when they put it in there, it died. Which, you know, that's so, let you know. So, it's good. So it's a brewery. Brew, brewery. I hate saying that fucking word. They're brewery. rural. <laughs> <laughs> it's a terrible word. Yeah, they just threw. Yeah, man. No, nah, they just, put they, bugs No, nah, they just threw some bugs in this shit. It's, that's what it means. It literally yeah, means they just threw some cicadas and some alcohol. And let it sit there for for a fucking twenty four hours. It's infused. I mean, that's. I mean, in fairness, that's what infusing is. You just throw shit into alcohol and you leave it there for a couple of weeks. That's it. What no. ta- what, what does it What does it do? What What does a it cicada pulled, taste like? They say it tastes like a succulent lobster. So you know, there you go. It is. It is. A, I mean, it I is mean, a lobster is a sea bug. It's a sea sea bug. bug. Right? Nah, yo. All right. So the, the, you know what else is a bug? A fucking cockroach. You don't yeah. put a fucking Yeah, that's what this looks like. It looks like they just threw a roach in this fucking in this alcohol, and that's disgusting. Y'all not, oh, so y'all, so oh, so right. y'all too good I to wouldn't. drink. Y'all, so y'all too good to drink roach water now? Roach Gatorade? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I mean, I'm just asking. <laughs> <laughs> you're, I mean, you're I'm, also, I'm also way too good for that. Yo, there's something about a roach, yo. Like, there's all these other bugs. I'm like, all right, well, maybe. No, nah, yo, a roach. I'm like, no. Mm-mm. Nah. Yeah, yeah. People, people do that. Nothing but a roach that just sits on the, sits on the ground for 30, for 700 no, it, years. No, a, a cicada, a <laughs> cicada is a roach with a fucking vacation plan. That's what, that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is. It gets to travel every 17 years. No, I'm not, e- is, I'm not eating or doing anything with roaches. This no, is This is stupid. It's very stupid. This is dumb, yo. Yeah, Get it is. In the fuck up. It is. Uh, trailers this week. Nosferatu. Um, this looks very, very good. Robert Eggers, um, who did Lighthouse, The Witch, um, and uh, what was the other one he Northman. did? Northman. <laughs> Northman, yes. Uh, this is his latest. Uh, look, I think this looks really interesting. Um Obviously, this is a very famous vampire story. We got a Nosferatu story in 79, I believe, and then the one, the, probably the most famous one, is a silent film from 1922. Um, Terrence, you're the horror guy. What do you think about this story? Yeah. Oh, it looks good. Uh, everything that I've seen him do has been good, so I'm going to check it out. I don't know if I've ever seen the 1922 movie, actually. Yeah. I've never watched the entire thing. Because it's in, it's a silent film, and those yeah. like something about silent films. All silent films are kind of scary, <laughs> even if it's not a horror movie. Yeah. They're a little weird. I don't like it. I don't like it. I remember Metropolis. Is it Metropolis? Movie's kind of scary. Eh? I don't lie. Yeah, it's a and bit it's not weird. It's supposed to be. Yeah, it's a bit weird. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, I'll watch it. I'm definitely going to check it out when it comes out. I mean, he's definitely I, got a style. Oh yeah, I mean, I I didn't realize it but i when i was watching i was like wow this this feels like the lighthouse and yes it's robert eggers as well so um and bill skarsgård who played pennywise um most famously at this point um is playing nasferatu or count orlock so um and look it's uh out christmas 2024 you know for all you christians out there if you want something to really uh <laughs> sink your teeth in this holiday season uh really nasferatu <laughs> okay that's a that's a wild ro- well you know today I work at uh was it the New York Post <laughs> <laughs> fucking assholes um Michael what are you what are your thoughts on Nosferatu are you seeing this no I'm not seeing this because <laughs> I don't like Victorian like stuff I, I don't I don't care for it I can't get past the fact that it probably smells really bad. Um, which is why people wore all those goddamn clothes. Yeah. Um, and I'm not into vampires and shit. Um, so yeah, this is not, this is not for me. Um, have fun. Uh, I'm out. It's a very good cast, by the way. 
Very, very good. Uh, Willem Dafoe, uh, Bill Skarsgård, like I said, um, Nicholas Holt, Lily Rose Depp, uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson. Um, yeah, to uh, name a few. So looks very, very good. Okay, uh, next up, the actual uh, official trailer for Batman the Cape Crusader. We played a little bit of the audio uh, last week. So you can hear uh, the voice of the guy playing Batman. And we were none too pleased. <clears throat> However, yeah. watching this, I think it actually does work. Yeah, apologies to uh, apologies to that guy because it. Yeah. Uh, uh, I was I was wrong. His yes. his voice does work um, in this in in when you actually hear it in the show. Uh, looks good. Looks like um, looks like old Batman the animated series. Um, like like uh, like the Batmobiles little like. Nine, like 1950s Rolls Royce Batmobile, mm -hmm. uh, um, like uh, that Commissioner Gordon and Barbara Gordon are black. Uh, a lot of niggas in 1940s. It's a little weird to me. I'm, <laughs> I was like, there's a lot of black folks in this in this trailer. That's yeah, yeah. and like well, positions of authority. Yeah, Batman. Yeah. Of <laughs> well, you mm. know, it's it's also a fantasy. So yeah, that's true. No, this looks dope, man. I, I was, I saw, it, I was like, oh wow, okay, this looks cool. Why does he? Why is he talking to Alfred in the Batman voice in the cave? Alfred knows who he is. Who he is? Because that's his. Because that's his real voice. That's his. That's his real voice. Bruce Wayne. Is, <clears throat> Bruce Wayne. Is the is the act. Yeah, that's the bullshit voice. Hey, everybody. It's huh. me. That's what, that's I, what I was saying last week. Right, like that's what I was saying last last week. It's it's much easier to go up, and have a bullshit voice going up than it is to have to make your voice deep and try to emote. So just use your regular voice as your Batman voice, and then you know, hey everybody, I'm Bruce Wayne. Hey, hey all right, you know, whatever rich people do. I don't know. That's my rich man impression. <laughs> yeah, no, that's uh, that's pretty good. It's Jeff Bezos. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think this looks great. It looks like just another season of Batman the Animated Series. Like it just, it just, it kind of fits right into that, um, which I'm here for because that was a wonderful show from start to finish. So, um, yeah, and look, I I have no problem in admitting I was 100 percent wrong about that voice. It absolutely works well here. Like yep, it just looks, it works. Good. It looks and sounds good. So and yeah, so this is coming to Amazon. Um, I remember when this was originally announced. I was like, mm, is that a good idea? Yeah, it turns out, pretty good idea. <laughs> so far, so good. Um, and also just having Bruce Tim working on this is great. Um, I, I, like, bet, uh, I like the designs for, for the characters, like the redesigns. Like you briefly see, uh, you briefly see uh, a quick glimpse of Two-Face, um, and he doesn't have like, half of his face is one color and the other half is a, is his normal skin like no it's it, it's his it, half of his face all his his entire face is the same color one side is just really fucked up right. uh and it looks dope um i think uh i think uh catwoman and and harley quinn they they both look good i think uh the the question looks cool I, look I, I always like seeing different takes on classic characters. Yep. And uh, so far, all of these are uh, are really hidden. Boy, Two Face is real fucked up. God damn. Yeah. It's unfortunate for him. So, all right, there we go. I'm interested. Are they doing? Are they bringing in? I mean, Harley's there, obviously. Like, are they just holding? Are they holding out a reveal of the Joker until we see him on the show? That would be kind of fun. Who oh, is Gary Anthony Williams playing? There you go. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I don't know. All right, let's talk about the uh, the best thing that happened this week. Um, I thought this was a Netflix trip. I thought this nope. was a Netflix movie. I'm I thought nothing, it was a look, Netflix. I'm just, look, I'm just saying right now, no hate. I'm going in all positive on this review, guys. All positive. Um, it does look like a Netflix movie, which is great. Netflix makes movies, so. 
No, I thought like this was little. No, I, I actually, be, when I heard that it was coming out, they were. I thought this was going to be a movie on Netflix. When I heard about it last year, yeah, it wasn't? that's what I thought. Yeah, I, no, I, I heard it, it never I was. was. I thought it was supposed to be a Netflix movie that was yeah. supposed to come out, and then like this nigga was too busy drinking his own piss allegedly, and then it got pushed back. <laughs> and, Let him know. And Let him know. Yes. I, I guess. Um, I guess. So what's, what's his name? What is that? Yeah, um, yeah. I I thought this originally was maybe we're may, maybe we're mixing it up with Red Notice, right? No, no, no. no Red Notice yo, was already I, out. No, I swear to God, this was supposed to be a Netflix movie. Here, I'm almost positive. What happened? <laughs> Wasn't. Maybe I'm bugging, but I could have sworn like me and Micah. Well, we both bugging, man. We both no, on, we I, both I on that island. No, I originally <laughs> thought so too. I'm just saying. I wonder if that's just Red Notice and Red One, just kind of being the names being so similar. Maybe that's where we got that. Just mix it up. I don't know. No, that's not where I got it. I, I like specifically remember like seeing like shots of this, and I thought it was a Netflix movie. What the fuck? Because the first, the first like still shot I saw was like, uh, what's his name? Jacked, Jack the fuck up. What's his name? Uh, yeah, are you rushing or are you dragging that guy? Yeah, that's yeah, J.K. Simmons. <laughs> right. J.K. J.K. Simmons. Simmons. Yeah, J.K. Simmons. Yeah, and I thought they were like the Netflix movie Red One. Maybe I'm just misremembering, but I okay. All right. Let me look at the history of this shit. Nigga, after a villain kidnaps Santa from the North Pole, an elf, E-L-F, which stands for extremely large and formidable. Okay. I'm about to. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. I don't like Christmas movies to begin with, so this is not, like, for me. Um, and, look, I know we, we, we bag on this dude a lot, but um, it's because we want what's best for him. You know, it's like having a friend. It's like having a friend. Yep, that's why I that do. like fucks with you, and it's like because you 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 know you you better than this, bro. You you better than this, and um, that's yeah. Apparently that's, not. Like this, uh, this is not. This don't look funny, yo. This don't look funny to no. me. And um, there's a talking. Uh, there's a talking polar bear in it. <laughs> um, I don't know what Chris Evans is doing, nigga. This is a two hundred and fifty million dollar budget, bro. Yo, what the? F- Yo, come That's on, right. man. This movie, it, this movie costs this a Avengers lot level. of money. Dude. This is an Avengers level movie, guys. This is an Avengers level film. Cool. This is not going to make its money back. You don't know that. You're speaking. Uh, you're right. Point. I don't. <laughs> you're you speaking from a point. One hundred percent. I am an ignorant nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe. That is going to make its money back. That's crazy. Two fifty? No. Mm-mm. How much did the Avatar two cost? Probably almost as much, or actually probably more, honestly. Um. So yeah, this is a Christmas movie. This is the Rock's Christmas movie. Uh, Santa Claus, played by J.K. Simmons, is kidnapped, um, and. The extremely large and formidable operative. Uh, what is this dude's name? Hold on, it's something stupid. Um, By the way, the I, I, I have a, name. I have a Calum Drift. This nigga's name is Calum Drift, yo. Good night, yo. <laughs> good, good. The fuck. And look, night. I, like it, it <laughs> just, it's just weird, yo. It's just weird. It's just the, this extremely large and formidable elf operative, Calum Drift. Uh, is they could is, even give him a is, clever Christmas name. <laughs> is task? I mean, maybe it is. I I, I don't fucking know. Uh, is is teamed up with a with a criminal tracker, uh, Jack O'Malley, played by Chris Evans. Uh, he's a he's a bounty hunter, and he has to rescue Santa Claus. And um, Lucy Liu is in it, and Krampus is a character. Um, Nick Kroll is in it. Uh, uh, Hiram Garcia at Seven Bucks Productions conceived the idea for the film. 
Um, Hiram is not exactly Hiram used to be from what I understand, he used to be, he's, he's the rocks, like former brother-in-law and like, he was like a, a personal assistant that he looks like, like Vin Diesel. We want to, yeah, he's like, he's like mini the rock. It's like a mini rock. I mean, I think if you hang out with the rock, you're obligated to like him? look the part. I'm dead serious. I'm, yeah, I think you are. I think you are obligated to look the part. But that's like, you know, all wrestling people, right? Like you've seen. Have you seen Michael Cole, Terrence, without it, without a shirt on? That nigga's jacked, yo. Michael Cole. Michael. Yes, nigga. Michael fucking Cole. Why? That dude the is announcer? Jacked. When did the that announcer, happen? Nigga. <laughs> the announcer. <laughs> what the hell? That dude, that dude is jacked, yo. It's just like a. It's just like a thing, yo. Like. You hang out with you hang out with all these wrestlers. You gotta, I mean, everybody working out. Like, all right, well, I guess I got maybe I get some free training. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what is going on, Michael? <laughs> okay, he's fucking ripped, though. <laughs> what is going on, man? Yo, that doesn't make any this sense. Is nuts. This doesn't make any sense. <laughs> How, yo? <laughs> like and this is like legit. Like he's working out. Like I'm sure he's taking oh. supplements. Like no, he's in. Okay, <laughs> okay, man. What? <laughs> wow. Look, sometimes you gotta let these motherfuckers know. These guys. Wow. Okay. Oh, he I did have a match. Wild. He did have a match called WW After the Bell, um, January second, twenty twenty. Came out in the old wrestling gear. That's fucking weird, yo. Like this is fucking super strange. <laughs> yeah, it don't look right. It don't look. It look Photoshop, nigga. Like it look. It look like a real life Photoshop. Like like let's just take this fifty something year old yeah. man and put him on this fucking jacked thirty four year old's body. Like what the fuck? A shredded Michael Cole tells WWE dot com how he lost sixty five pounds. Okay, this is fucking insane. Well, if you feel bad about yourself uh, body-wise, just know that Michael Cole is shredded and you're not. What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> Jesus, that's crazy. <laughs> that's insane. So okay, I, I, that's... Found a, I found a website. It's a, it's a, uh, it's a Mexican website. Um, but in the title, it says uh, Red One, uh, Dwayne Johnson and Chris Evans, um, premiere trailer for their um, upcoming movie on Netflix. So... That's from July 25th of this year. So I don't know. Maybe internationally it's distributed by Netflix or something like that. But, Maybe but I'm not seeing it. And I'm not seeing anything um, on Wikipedia about it. But it is curious. Yeah. It is curious. I, I could have sworn it was a Netflix movie too. Yeah. I, I agree with you. Um, it, it looks, it looks – um, But – Overall, it, it looks really like, and, and I'm going to be really positive here as much as I can. It looks like complete dog shit, right? Like this is, <laughs> what what are we doing right now? People can what's be like, the, oh, what's the audience? That's my thing. Maybe it's for kids. And if that's the it's, case, okay, fine. It has to be. It's, it has to be. It's, it's, for Jumanji. it's for the Jumanji crowd, right? Like the they got the guy. Well. Right. They got the guy. And is look, it? I'll be fair, yo. Those I like that popular. Jumanji movie. I like yeah, that. I like that. I like that first Jumanji movie. I thought it was pretty good. Um, I, he also did uh, Walk Hard, the Dewey Cox story. Oh, people say that's um, funny. I've never seen it. But and uh, I've seen Bad Teacher. Tape? That wasn't too bad. Uh, I never so look, it. maybe it'll be maybe it'll be good. It's not for me. Um, I'm not. I'm not. I don't like Christmas movies. I can't believe this movie is two hundred and fifty million dollars. Yeah, that's insane. When the biggest stars are like Dwayne Johnson and Chris Evans, like all respect to like Lucy Liu, but like she's the next highest, you know, the next biggest star there, and she's not. She ain't pulling twenty million dollars for this movie, is she? No. Maybe uh, J.K. Simmons is. I would argue J.K. Simmons is the next biggest star. Oh yeah, yeah, he is, he is, he is, yeah, he is. 
He's not getting twenty million dollars for this movie. Nobody is, is except for Dwayne Johnson. That's it. Nobody's getting that kind of money. And he might not even get it. But he might not even be getting twenty million. That's a lot of money, man. And it don't. It's, we're, we're, it's the okay. snowman. The snowman CGI. That's two hundred of them. Two hundred fifty million dollars. And this is supposed to be the first of a tr- of a of a, uh, a trilogy of a trilogy, yeah. yo. Is it a trilogy? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Potential. Okay. Yeah, potential franchise, not trilogy. Potential franchise. Look, the bottom line, red- yo. <laughs> yeah, you saw that. <laughs> The footage of Red One was first shown to CinemaCon to journalists selected by Johnson's publicists, but they were not allowed to write about what they saw. Right. All because, right. Because they didn't want to, he didn't want all the positive news to come out. <laughs> that's that's that makes sense. Like, don't that's tell people how much you liked it. Please don't. Um, don't tell people how good the movie is, right? <laughs> Look, I told you, I told you my my thought on this, which is you can literally watch the trailer and you can write the movie pitch for this, right? It's like, hey, don't you know how Christmas is all like nice and kind of gay? Why don't we make one for tough guys and fucking people whose knuckles drag on the ground quite literally when they walk and thirteen uh, year old boys? And they were like, hell yeah! And they all high fived each other and smoked cigars and then they made this piece of shit. This is dumb. This is fucking dumb. It is his best attempt, I think, at making a jingle all the way. That's what he's trying to do. Mm. I'm good. I'm good. Y'all let me know how it is. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not saying how much, uh, how much Terra Mana is going to be on screen. <laughs> <laughs> Santa Claus will drink. Uh, they will. Santa Claus and extremely large, formidable dude. What's his name? Calum, Calum Drift. Calum, they, Calum they will. Drift. They will. Uh, look, Calum Drift, Jack O'Malley, and Red One, aka Santa Claus. They will all cheers and drink Terramana at the end when all the fighting is done. Because of course, you know he's all jacked, so he's gonna have a badass action sequence in the end because he's Santa Claus. I guaranteed. Guaranteed. Yeah, of course. I could write this piece of shit movie very easily. <laughs> I tell you every fucking beat of this movie without without fail. This is just this is this is movies by the numbers. Like I mean, most most Netflix movies are movies by committee, right? Because yeah. everybody has Netflix, and you want to you want to please your 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 massive audience. So, like, I get it, I get it. This just is not for me, and I'll be done. Yeah, Chris Evans is better than this. That's what I'll say. J.K. Nah, I mean, he, he also did those. He also did those other terrible movies. Though. Yeah, yeah he did Ghosted. Yeah, well, again, Ghost Chris Evans Apple. is better than this. He's better than this. Uh, all right, uh, look. Again, it's for Who's teenagers. Who? That's fine. It's not for me. I. Oh. Okay. Again, I thought this was coming out on Netflix. Apparently, it was supposed to come out on Amazon Prime. That's what the uh, Wikipedia says. So maybe I'm bugging. I don't know. It looks knows? like a Netflix movie. But, you know, Amazon MGM Studios is distributing it in the U.S. and WB is distributing it internationally. So you'll be able to watch this on Max soon enough, guys. Cool. $250 million. And it, it shot to $250, $250 million because uh, The Rock delayed it. They yeah, added remember, $50 million to it. Yeah, remember when he was like late by like eight hours and shit? <laughs> That's for that this was, movie. For this was it. I would be pissed if I was production. It's like, yo, you just, all right. This movie's not gonna. I mean, it might make its money back. Like, it might break even. But again, I mean, like, doesn't they have to make like five hundred million dollars to break to, for it to actually be profitable? Since it since it costs so much to make, that's probably why they're putting it in theaters, right? It's got the best chance to make its money back in theaters, right? Like, cause yeah. So uh, God bless. It'll do. It'll do good internationally. Oh, because these movies I, tend to make. Tend I, to that I do not well. doubt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't doubt that. And people love The Rock, so it it might it might domestically. I don't see it. <laughs> like I, I just don't. I don't know why he still has so much goodwill, uh, considering like the last couple of movies may have just crashed and burned. 
Uh, he's got a, he's got a lot of goodwill now because he was uh, he he jumped he was back the final to, boss. <laughs> yeah, he he uh, he jumped back. He 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 went on a date with the one that brought him uh, for a yeah. while, <laughs> and, and and everybody remembered. Oh yeah, I, I liked him. Okay. Best role in years. Yeah, yeah, I mean, quite literally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, he's got that. He's got that A twenty four movie coming up. So maybe he broke. I want that movie to be he good, man. He injured something on during that movie, uh, like an elbow or hand or something. Oh, really? Yeah. Right. So they might that might be delayed too. Uh, <clears throat> I want that movie I to be that. good, and I'll tell you if the trailer oh. looks good, I'm gonna see it. As much shit as I give him, I'm 100 percent see it. I want him to do stuff that is better than this. I do. I might rewatch Pain and Gain. I might rewatch Pain and Gain. That was a good fucking movie, man. That's his best role to date. Like movie wise, that's his best role. He was great in that. Where he just played a giant meathead. Who's he injured his elbow on uh, Oh, on oh did he injure his little elbow? Oh. <laughs> probably <laughs> probably really fucking hurt, actually. <laughs> it's just funny to say that. It's not that big of a deal. See me with Dude, that was fucking huge. Ow. ow. God damn. Ugh. I'm good. Thanks. Um, <laughs> all right. That anyway. is it for us. Um, shout out to everybody who um, in our Discord who was really hyped for Red One. Uh, Cam especially. <laughs> <laughs> no need to comment. Just saying. That's what he said. Um, all right. That is it for us. We will see you guys next week. See you. See you.